Hi everybody, my name is Miss Ninka. I'm going to show you how to move a sprite with the um, arrow keys on your keyboard. First, after you log in, click on create to create a, another, a new project. Um, now, I'm assuming you have some scratch experiment experience, so you know that the way you put the sprite, in this case the cat, you have to drag a block into the workspace and then add some kind of an action to make the cat do something. And I'm going to say when the green flag is clicked, I want the cat to say hello for two seconds. It's a little confusing. It says say hello, but there's actually no sound. So just be a, like a cartoon bubble. So now I click the green flag and the cat says hello for two seconds. Now say I want to move the cat with the arrow keys. There's two ways you can do this. The first way is you go to events. You find the block that says when space key is pressed. Drag that into the workspace. Click on the little arrow. And then in this case, I want it to move forward. So I got to go to the right. So when the right arrow is pressed, I want the cat to do something. I'm going to change his position. You can do with motion, move 10 steps. Now I click on the right key, it moves 10 steps. You can also do it the way I prefer by changing the X and Y axis. So I'll draw some lines on the stage. And then we have the horizontal one is the X and the vertical one is the Y. X and Y directions. So, and then we have positive and negative and zero in the middle. So I, I can do like here, we can call this neg negative X. And then this would be negative y, and this would be y. So you don't have to do that, I just want to show you where the cat is going. So go back to my sprite, and now when I click on the right arrow, you see the cat move 10 steps in the x direction. And in order to make this easier for the next step, I'm going to change the move 10 steps and put it change x by what? Uh, change x by 10. Does the same thing, just written down a little different. But now we really know what way the cat is going. Now he's going here. There's no way if I press another button that he's going to go back. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on this when right arrow key press block and I'm going to click duplicate. Now I have two blocks and then I'm going to change the right arrow to the left arrow and I'm going to change X by minus 10, negative 10. So now when I click the left arrow, the cat moves back. So this works. Uh, it works the same way to go up and down, but we need to do change Y. So I'm going to go to events. You can also do duplicate, but it's a little easier for me to show you if I repeat myself. So now when up arrow key is pressed, I want to go up. And up is Y, the vertical direction. So I'm going to go to motion and I'm going to say change Y by 10. So now when I click the up arrow on my keyboard, the gap goes up. Then I'm going to do the same thing to go down. 
one space depressed, change that to down arrow, motion, change y by negative 10, minus 10 to go back down. So now I wrote a pretty short and simple script to make the cat say hello to move it up and down on the stage. So going down, up, right, left, or forwards, and backwards. So now if you have, this is basically the start to any interactive game you want. Now you see that's kind of choppy, which is okay if, you know, you don't have to change it if you don't want to, but there's another way to do this. It's a longer way, but it looks a lot smoother. Um, we're going to have to use a repeat block and the code might look really complicated, but once you do one block, one arrow, and I explain to you how it works. You can copy and paste, you can duplicate, and you, you will see that even though it looks really hard, it's actually really doable. So to do this, I'm going to take the right arrow, I'm going to start with that, and I'm going to go to Control, and I'm going to do Repeat Until. So this block, I'm going to take the change x by 10, put it to the side. I'm going to put repeat until. Now you see this really, you see this empty space. Something has to go in there. But if I try to put change x in, it doesn't fit. So we got to look for something with that same shape. And we're going to ask repeat what I want you to do in here, which is change x by 10, until when? Because right now, when I click the right arrow, this is going off. It's not coming back. Even when I click the left arrow, it doesn't want to come back anymore. So I'm just going to click on it and drag it back in here. Whoop, and it just keeps going. So I take that off to get the cat back. Okay, let's click the stop button. Come back cat. Okay. I put this back on. So repeat until. Now we have to say repeat until I do this or that or until I do not do this or that. So I'm going to go to the green dot operators. And in here you can find a block that says not. So operators not. I'm going to take the not and I'm going to put it in there with the repeat until not. So now I'm going to repeat until I do not do something. In this case, I'm going to repeat until I do not press the right arrow. So as soon as I let go of the arrow, this script should stop. Then I'm going to go to sensing, the light blue dot, and I'm going to find a block that says key space pressed. Now I'm going to put this key space pressed in the not operator. Now it says repeat until not key pressed. And repeat until I do not click the space key. But since I was talking about the right arrow, I'm going to have to change this key space pressed to right arrow. So make sure that whatever is in your event in the when I press a key do something is the same as in the repeat until I stop doing something. So now when I click the right arrow on my keyboard the cat will move. And when I don't he will stop. Now. You see how I'm going back, it's pretty choppy. I keep clicking the left arrow. When I click the right arrow, it goes a lot faster and smoother because it's actually doing it until I stop clicking. So you can 
go faster and slower. So these are two ways you can do it. I would advise you to pick one way and stick with it. So now you have this complicated code and then once again you can do right click duplicate and then I'm going to drag that here and I'm going to take this out and for the left arrow got to make sure left arrow is pressed then we're going to do something until the left arrow is not pressed and we were changing x by minus 10 to go back by negative 10 so I'm going to make sure this is negative 10 as well I'm going to do the same thing for the up and down because I like it a lot better when it's more smooth. So down arrow, down arrow. I'm going to take this out and change it to change Y because we're going to go down vertically. So change Y by minus 10 to go down. And then we're going to duplicate this. Put that here. I'm going to clean up a little bit. Get rid of this. And I get rid of this. Now make sure when the up arrow is pressed, I want to go up. So once again, make sure these are both the same. Then change Y by 10. And there we go. So right and left are going back and forth, up and down for going. Now, so I'm going to click the green flag, say hello, then I'm going to click the right arrow to go forward, left arrow to go back, down arrow to go down, and up arrow to go up. And you can just play with it like a character in like Minecraft or Roblox or anything. Now you can also, if you're really into gaming, instead of up arrow, you can select the letter W. You can put any key for your keyboard that you want. Um, now this is pretty cool. It moves, but the cat is a sprite that has two costumes. Two things, two positions he's in, and you can actually make it look like he's gonna walk. So we have this costume number one, Costume number two looks like it's running. So in the code, we can make some changes to make the cat look like it's running when it's going forward. So now, it'll be a lot of fun if we can make the cat look like it's actually moving its legs. So here in the costumes again, we have costume number one, where it looks like this. And costume number two, where it looks like it's kind of running. So we want to start with going to looks and then switch costume to costume two. I want to start with costume one when I click the green flag. So I'm going to make sure to set that so every time we start over, the cat looks like this. Now when I click the right arrow, I want to make it look like it's walking, like it's moving its legs. So then I'm going to get the block, switch costume to costume 2. Now if I do that, and I move the cat, it moves, it switches, but it doesn't switch back. So now it's kind of sliding, running. Now I want to make it look like it's moving. I'm going to have to get another switch costume block, switch it back to costume 1. Now if I do this, it goes so fast you can barely even see it. So I need to add some weight block so we can actually see it with our eyes. Because the computer does it so fast, you blink your eyes and you miss it. So I'm going to go back to control and I'm going to put the weight one second. Now this is really long, so this is probably too long. Very choppy. So I'm going to change the one second to 0.1 second. And then I'm going to try it again. Hello. And now I'm walking. And I'm sliding back. 
So this gives you the illusion that the cat is actually running. Looks choppy. There's other costumes that are probably better for this, but it gives you an idea. You can add that code to all your arrows if you want to do that. I'll show you one example. I will add it to the up arrow. That. And then let's see how that looks. Go here, I go here, and I slide down and I slide back. I think that's actually pretty nice. Pretty nice. And that's it for this lesson. Two ways to move the cat and to change the sprite to make it look like it's actually moving. Now, don't forget to save. So I'm going to type in here. I'm going to go just give it a simple name, move cat. And then if you don't see a save now button, you're good. It should be all saved. If you want other people to see your project, you click on share. And then you can go back to your profile, click on my stuff, and in my stuff you should see all the projects you make. I made a lot. Um, so then I have to move cat, I can click on that again to open it up, play it right here, and walk. It looks kind of funny. It's a lot better when it slides back. Then you tell people about what your project is, moving cat, and then you say, I made this project. I made it as a 20 minute lesson. And that's it. Then you can show everybody on uh, scratch, click on see inside to start coding it if you want to add some changes.